right, you ready to start painting? If you have brand new brushes, the first thing that you wanna do is rinse them out in water. You're gonna sometimes find that brushes are really stiff and that's because they have sizing in them and that's to keep the bristles in place during shipping. So the first thing you're gonna do is rinse your brushes out. Notice how I'm tapping it on the side there and get that sizing out of there. We never wanna leave our brushes in sitting face down in the water. This is gonna ruin our brushes. We're gonna to wanna to wipe those off and then if we're not using them right away, you're gonna to wanna to dry those off and keep those upright in our station. So I'm gonna start here with my University Bright number six brush, and we're gonna test out Fable Blue. This is an acrylic basics paint. And so remember I told you it looks one way in the mass tone in another video I told you that. So here we can, again, acrylic is made from pigment, polymer, and it has water as the emulsion. So we can add water to that, and you can see here what a different color that ends up being, right? Now, one of the things that happens as you add more and more water to the acrylic paint is we are stretching out the distance between those, that polymer that's holding together the pigments. So that's gonna give us a nice washy look, but it's not gonna be really structurally sound. With paint, we have two things that's always gonna happen. You can have mechanical adhesion. So even though this is quite stretched out in terms of the pigment, it's still gonna sit there into the grooves of the canvas and that pigment will sit there but it's not gonna have something that's gonna, gonna mechanically bind it. So in addition to using water, the other thing we wanna have is um, a polymer gel. So I'm using GAC 100 here. And so we can put a little bit of that there and you can use this to create really nice glazes and extend our paint. You see the difference in the way that performs, the integrity of it, how it holds together versus just when we put the water in it. So that's gonna be structurally more sound. So different paints are naturally transparent and others are going to be naturally opaque. The pig pigment that I just picked up right now, this hue color is called phthalo blue. It's one of my favorite colors and it is a transparent. So it's really wonderful for glazes. And as you can see with this polymer medium we're putting in there, it allows us to do a lot of glazes like this. So that's one way to use your paints. Let's go ahead and look at what um, something that's an opaque. I'm gonna assume that this primary red here is supposed to be an opaque. It's kind of a funny red. It has a little bit of a pinkish tone to it, sort of orangey pink. The closest thing that it probably would be is something like a cadmium red medium. And you can see here that this one goes on and it's more opaque. But even with an opaque pigment, we can add medium into it and turn that into a glaze. Now you might know this already from other classes, but with color mixing, right, if we're putting red and blue together, it's supposed to be purple or violet, but we don't always wanna do equal portions. You can push things one way or the other, a little bit of the darker pigment's gonna go a long ways. It's not bad. Now, acrylic dries really fast. Sometimes, like within a half an hour, it is dry. So unless you have open acrylics, one of the challenges is, is how do you blend things together? So you can take stuff while it's still wet and feather this back and forth here I've created like an ombre. But you have to get really used to the open time for how, how long is it gonna stay open and be able to mix. Remember it was a, just a minute or so ago that I put there that color down there and it's still gonna allow us to blend. So with your synthetic brushes here, these are really nice for smooth kinds of marks and also for blending. We have some bristle brushes here and these are gonna give us a much more um, kind of we can use these for scumbling. If we're gonna put paint like this, make us kind of a dry brush scumbling effect. Or if we wanna have much more of a painterly um, kind of feel to it. So these brushes are gonna do different things. Let's go ahead and play around with the black and let's see if we can make something drip here. So 
I'm adding water into the paint there. I can use this to make line work. I can create washes. And carve back into it. Just like you would with oil paints in the initial phases, you can um, sort of lay out your underpainting and you have a little bit of time where you can lift and pull, push and pull things out. But it's gonna dry fairly fast. Let's try adding white to this. So remember how I was saying, you're never gonna wanna do equal portions of the paint. <laughs> a little bit of white, tiniest bit of black. Look how dark that gets. Because acrylic dries so fast, I wouldn't put all the paints that you're using out all at one time. Just use what you need. And then if you have to, cover it up with plastic. But you see the difference there between doing sort of a wash with the water versus putting in the white for the gray. And let's see what happens if we were just to take the black and thin that out with our polymer emulsion, a polymer gel here. See how we can kind of make it a little bit transparent? Just sort of testing out the different kinds of grays. And that one happens if I take more of that gel and just put that in there. See how that gives us really different effects? Here, I'm making some line work in that gray paint that's still wet. And let's see how we might feather that. Soften those edges up. I notice that I'm wiping my brush all the time when I'm putting it in the paint. So the brushes that I'm currently using, yes, I might pop those back in there for a moment, but I'm gonna, not gonna leave those standing in the water for a, a long time. Let's also test out another gel medium. As I mentioned, this one's a fluid gel. And here I wanna get out my palette knife. And do you see how that has a more heavy body kind of viscosity to it? And gels can come in different sheens. This one is a semi-gloss. You can get it a matte finish or a gloss finish. Let's mix together that. When you're mixing the gel into your paint, initially it's gonna have a milky kind of look, but this, trust me, will dry so that you're not seeing the milkiness in it. And then this, we're gonna be able to do impasto techniques. So that's one, one of the uses for a gel medium. And if we just try, you know, using that to paint, again, we can make glazes just like we did with our fluid one but we can change whether we want it semi-gloss, glossy, matte, and so on. But see how you can see a little bit more of the brushwork than we did with the more fluid one, so it gives you a different sort of effect. So they're just, those are some of the basics and beginning with acrylic paint. And I'll show you more when we actually go to do a painting. I need to wash out my brush. I have rinsed it out in my dirty water <laughs> here and um, we can go ahead and put this down the sink. There are also products, because this isn't exactly the best for the environment, uh, Golden Acrylic does make products that will help separate out the pigment from the water so that we're never putting down pigments down the drain. Um, but we're gonna need to wash out our brushes here. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the water, and I can simply use silver water scoopers. I'm gonna use this soap. But first I'm getting most of the pigments out. The brush is never gonna go back to totally the original color. And then I'm going to use dish soap. I don't have to use dish soap. And I'm cleaning the brush, getting that out. And I'm just, I'm going to clean it just thoroughly at the end of my painting session. I don't have to do this every time I'm switching my color. And for bigger brushes, I might go like that and tap it to dry. And then you're going to want to have this drawing sitting upright or it could be sitting flat, but don't have it all wrapped up so it's gonna get all moldy. You wanna have it um, so it can air dry. Never keep your brushes down, you'll hurt the bristles.